Hi y'all. I know you are here to look at my kitchen and all of its splendor, but before we do that, can I make a very exciting announcement? Thanks to all of you who watch Budget Eats fanatically, we have been nominated for one of the best food videos on the internet. If you want to make us win this award, you gotta vote. The link is in the description box and we would love it if you would. Thank you so much in advance. I love you all. And now we can look at my kitchen. Oh hi Delish! Welcome to my kitchen that you definitely haven't seen 20,000 times before! Good morning! Aaron says our walls are sweating! See you tomorrow. Keep waiting for birds to land on the fire escape because I just want to see something alive but there's nothing there. I'm so delighted to see you! Come on in! Come on in! Just one sec, we're gonna plug in the Christmas lights. Ta-da! Y'all have been requesting this video despite seeing my kitchen in literally every single episode of Work From Home Budget Eats. But Julia, our beloved try-it-all queen, is tired of seeing your kind compliments and desires and needs to see every crevice of my kitchen. And so today, we bring to you a kitchen tour from June. This kitchen tour is going to look a little different than the other ones you've seen on our channel. One, because I'm self-shooting it today, Erin is out. Two, my kitchen might officially be the smallest kitchen we've ever shown on kitchen tours because it is about 100 square feet. I live in a studio slash junior one bed apartment and so this is the only other full room besides my living bedroom combo. So welcome to my 100 square feet of cooking oasis. So my favorite part of this entire kitchen is just how long it is. It actually is great for shooting in. Erin and I have been in this apartment for close to four years now and we were actually thinking about moving this year but because we couldn't find a kitchen that was better than this to shoot in, we stayed. Another favorite facet of this kitchen is my windowsill. It's where all of my plants are growing. My basil is dying after three years because I guess pandemic stress is just getting to everyone. This windowsill is where I shoot a lot of my food stills now for sight and I love it. It gets an amazing amount of light and it just has a very naturalistic look about it. It's also quite wide for a window and it's got that gorgeous kind of mahogany tone of wood. And you know, it lets in all the beautiful sounds of the city. Really bummed that my garlic chives are dying, but my scallions are thriving, so trade-offs. What are the three things that you'll always find in my pantry? Generally speaking, all the cabinets above the fridge I cannot reach, so I never put anything I actually want to use on a daily basis up there. That usually has like bean curds, woodier, canned stuff, random spices, and pastry items that have just been lingering for years that I'll probably never use until Maybe the zombie apocalypse? You'll find stuff in like containers that say they're hummus, but they're actually just, you know, like two pieces of crushed dried salty kelp that I had left over from my ramen experiments. That's what that cabinet is. And then gradually as we're moving over, you'll see a cabinet where I store all of my plates and bowls and endless jars that Aaron keeps wanting me to toss out because they keep falling and crashing and it's a mess just like my life. But they're still holding on. This is my drying rack that I stole from my ex-roommate and the bottom baking sheet tray is actually from Delish. It's great for baking, but even better for dish drying. This is where all of our oils and vinegars live. This is Aaron's like citron peppercorn oils that he loves, olive oil, the yush. As we get to this side, we're gonna hit the jackpot of spices. Now I cleaned this area out for you guys because if I didn't organize it at least a little bit, we would not be seeing the end of this episode. As I have it now, as you can see, an abundance of spice. I honestly don't know if there's a way for me to choose three favorite spices out of this ginormous collection of spices that I've accumulated over the years, but I think if I had to choose, oh god. I think for sure we're a citron peppercorn household. We have it ground, we have the red one, we have the green one. They're all delicious, they're all kind of different. I also really love my seeds, my fennel and my cumin seeds. There's also coriander seeds that I like toasting in a pan and grinding down into a powder. 
Homemade ground coriander seeds taste very different than store-bought ones. It's a lot toastier, it's a lot nuttier, it's a lot more savory, and it's a lot more complex. Asfatida slash Hing is a recent discovery that I found at Patel Brothers. It's used a lot in Indian cooking, South Asian cooking. It's very pungent, it's very savory, and it's got like a very like stinky, questionable factor to it that when you put it into food, divine. I also have an entire collection of different forkake, also a Japanese condiment. It's got different kinds of sugars and salts and seaweeds and sometimes bonito flakes. This one is a mala flavored one. This one is a fried chicken flavored one. Guys, options. So many. And that was only the first shelf. <laughs> Don't worry, it's a lot less overwhelming when we get to the higher shelves, which is where I keep all of my kind of sweet-ish leaning spices, whole spices that I don't use a lot. Maybe sometimes I pull out for specialty cooking. Stuff like caraway seeds and cardamom pods and some toasted cloves. Stuff like black cardamom, lavender flowers, and also ground juniper berries. I experimented with ground juniper berries with a cold cured salmon lox recipe, and I don't know what I'm gonna do with the rest of this. Smells, smells good. And we found some spices that I don't even know what they are anymore because I bought them at one time thinking I would experiment with them, but then I didn't. And so now, th just 30 years later, we have them. If, uh, if you know what these spices are, drop a comment down below, please. Let me know how to use them. Over there is a the spice backup, and over here is our tea and coffee backup, along with all of our liqueur, all of our vinegar, and any big oils that don't fit elsewhere. Small kitchen, make do. Oh, but um, speaking of tea, let's take a class trip to my tea and coffee collection. So you may or may not have noticed I'm not a coffee person. It sets me on edge. It makes me feel like I'm about to die in a very, very bad way, not in a calming, soothing way. And so we have tea. We have green tea. We have red tea. We have herbal tea that's mostly errands for his sleepy times. And I just drink like two jars of tea every day. I don't know if that's good for me, probably not. I think if you've watched one episode of Budget Eats, you've always noticed just a jar of mysterious liquid hanging around on the counter in the background, and that's usually tea. I brew tea day and night, I drink it cold, I drink it warm, I drink it ice, I drink it, drink it like water. He's like Toy Story, he doesn't come alive until he needs to, until you're watching. Okay, so two things that I wanna clear up that people always see on my counter and are always like, you always have crushed tomatoes and you always have this yogurt container. This isn't yogurt and this isn't crushed tomatoes. This is just a lovely tin that used to hold crushed tomatoes that now holds a uh, random hair and my scrubbies for dishwashing. And this, oh, this is not yogurt. This is my compost bin. Yum. Three things you'll never find in my kitchen probably include margarine. That might be it. Aaron, is there anything you never buy for our own eating purposes? Um, coconut. Co That's not true. I buy coconut. I would steak. Like steak. Cheese. Yep. This is true. We're for the most part a vegetarian slash pescatarian household. We'll cook bone broth from time to time, buy some off meats like organ meat and stuff that people don't normally eat just because it's there and there's no demand for it in North America. So figured, why not? Um, they're also super healthy for you. And as much as we can, we try to stay away from meat products. Having said that, we do like buying lunch every Tuesday from this Indonesian place near us. And Aaron got, Aaron, what did you get? Looks delicious. This plate comes from Indojava in Indo Algiers, Queens. Yes. This is chicken sambal ijo, long hot green pepper with lemongrass, spicy fried shrimps with eggs, sauteed potatoes and coconut milk, and spicy crispy spring potatoes and peanuts. Can I eat it now? Yes. Can I eat it? Yes, take it. Here, I'll take my lunch. Do you want a fork or just, you're gonna dump your face in it? Oh. Yeah, just like that. <laughs> Three things you'll always find in my fridge or freezer are, I don't know, man, there's a lot. <laughs> I would say it's highly dependent week to week because I'm developing different recipes for Delish. You will probably always, always see peanut butter. You will always see just like 
endless amounts of apples everywhere. They are my favorite fruit. They are my favorite food. They are my everything. I love all of them. Butter. For the most part, we only use a pat here or there for pan frying certain things, for putting on pancakes. That's it. The top shelf is just reserved for like random condiments. My favorite mayo, some dried ass chili peppers, some miso, this random apple syrup that I made because Julia sent me a whole gallon of apple juice because Amazon Prime didn't have Martinelli's. And then just your normal stuff, you know? Maybe some cheese, maybe some eggs, some olives, carrots, maybe not totally normal stuff. I have like a jar of soaked cashews here. I don't know what I was thinking, but we'll use it somehow. Aaron always keeps a box of these on hand. He likes to just stir fry some vegetables, put it over rice, and it's absolutely delicious. And we have a lot of hot sauces, and my fridge is now very angry at me, so we have to close it so it stops beeping at me. My freezer is very random. You may think that this is frozen strawberries, but it's actually a frozen bag of compost. Here is a container of fried chicken bones that we didn't use our mouth to bite off of that we will maybe make some stock out of. I don't know why I save these things, but I do. It's just what I do. And then it's just a lot of ingredients that I buy because I see them at the store and I'm like, I want that. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it, but I want it. Here is a pound of ricotta cheese that expired uh, last May. I also tend to keep a lot of my flowers frozen in here, um, especially whole flowers. Nuts and flowers, anything that has oil really can go rancid at room temp or even you know, refrigerate it sometimes. So for longer holding periods, for longer storage, freezer is the best option for me. If there's one thing you can change about your kitchen, what would it be? I would love to have another window just to have more natural light. It's really useful now that I'm shooting videos at home. Maybe getting a little bench set up here so that I could have more workspace, like a nice little butcher's block. What is the biggest disaster you've had in this kitchen? There's been a lot. I would say that a near miss disaster was I left a pot of boiling water on the stove and forgot about it and then we went for a walk that was like four hours and we came back and thankfully nothing was burning down but that could have been really bad other than that i've just burnt a lot of pots you might or might not have seen me use these pots over and over again in all of my videos they are very thin cheap stainless steel ikea pots they were like 14 dollars for a set of three of them and they burn so easily if you don't control your heat very well. Who is the coolest person you've ever cooked for in your kitchen? Myself, obviously. I don't really have friends. I know so Aaron. Have you, have you met him? But no. I do love him. I do love all of my friends. It's a lonely existence here in Woodside, Queens, guys. Can you talk us through some of the cookbooks in your kitchen? I actually started this thing on Instagram a couple of weeks ago where I just started auctioning off a lot of my cookbooks because to be honest, I have them. I almost never read them. They're very pretty, and I feel like they deserve to go off to better homes, but I still have a few on hand. You know, to stay on brand, I have to have a couple of these. A little plug here for our breakfast and brunch quarterly that just came out, featuring a kanji and yo tiao recipe from yours truly. I don't know where it is because I haven't read it yet. Oh my God, I don't read any of my books. <laughs> It's got beautiful photos shot by Andrew, and it has a little bit of a blurb about my memories of growing up eating kanji and yotao, and look at me, I'm so cute. Here's one that my former pastry chef Diana gifted me for Christmas one year, and I read most of it, Diana, I did. And here is a huge tome on Islamic world food traditions that I hope to, I don't know how that got there, that I hope to read one day. I also have a couple of books that I'm hoping will help me with a lot of my autoimmune issues, with a lot of just like my eczema. In case you're like the true peeping Tom type and you really wanna know what's in every single corner of my kitchen, let me show you my drawers. Except that one, I can't open that one because I have a mobile phone tripod -y thing stationed and clamped to my countertop, so this one is no longer accessible. It just has like cat and dog treats in it, even though I don't have a pet. This is where most of my cooking supplies live. We got a rolling pin, we got a bench scraper, we got the best can opener in the world. The only one worth having is OXO. We have a microplane that's actually OXO. We have a tea strainer. We have measuring cups and just lots of things. Too many. 
the rest of those are all fake except for my junk drawer which has junk in it. All of my Tupperware live here, just random everything falls out constantly. Uh, kitchen cleaning supplies, it's a mess naturally. We have um, a lot of big bowls, my strainer, my lids, my pots, and uh, a mixer. This is where all of my large baking vessels live, but if they don't fit in there or if I feel like I definitely jammed something in there and broke all the other things, I'll start using my oven for storage. What do you never use but can't bring yourself to get rid of it? I mean, there are too many things to name, but one thing that has always been just like poking me in the eye every time I open up my fridge is this. I got this off of the free table at work maybe two years ago now what is time anymore, and uh, tasted it once, and it's quite powdery and earthy and a little bit bitter, and I have no idea what to use it in. So, please let me know if you have ideas of how to use this. And the last question, what do you find yourself making most often? I mean, whatever you see on camera, I guess. Filming videos is now my life, maybe for better or worse and what you see is what I eat most of the time. I'm big on food waste. I don't really like to throw away food unless I absolutely have to and I almost never have to. Most of the time it's just apples and peanut butter though, honestly. When you cook for a living, sometimes you just don't want to do it for fun. Do you want to show off your favorite spicy things? Absolutely. Okay. Everybody knows these from the budget series. Red pepper nice tasty. Red pepper nice tasty. Do you have a preference on which one? The flakes, not the ground powder. Why is that? I don't know, it just tastes better. I find that this one blooms better in oil, and this one has a more fragrant taste when you just put it into stir fry. Dried chilies, very important. Any dried chilies? Yeah, I mean, these are really flavorful. I think these are from a Chinese market, right? We got them for a dollar for the Thanksgiving special. Yeah, I love doing these in the stocks that I make. Ooh. Oh yeah, nice and smoky. Next we have classic sambal, mm -hmm. which I like much better than Rooster Brand Sriracha. You can tell how much we like it by yeah. how much we've used it. Also it also makes my hands flare up so bad because it triggers my eczema. This is the best brand of sriracha sauce ever. And if you see this brand ever, you buy it. If you ever find like the hot spicy hot one, get that one too because that one is delicious. This one is a little bit sweeter and the best thing about this is, oh, oh no, when did they start putting preservatives in this? I thought it was just, oh now I'm sad. Yes. And it also has a no MSG sign on here. What's I thought tastes, I loved you. Tastes good. The question that I've been asked so many times is how do you keep your stove so clean? Guys, get a really nice microfiber cloth, preferably one with a little scrubby built in. How cute is that? And then grab yourself some white vinegar and just have at it. Elbow grease. We don't all have the same playing field, but if you got one like I do, vinegar and a scrubby is all it takes. Yes, it's in a method bottle, but it is just white vinegar, I assure you. Try not to use an abrasive scrubby. It will scratch up some of the surfaces and then those little scratches will trap dirt and then make your life very sad. In terms of tools that I consider essential, I don't think there are many. Obviously, I love my chef's knife. I bought it many years ago when I first started out as a rookie cook, which I still am. Not a chef, guys. I'm just a cook. It's a high carbon steel number and it's a santoku shape, which is very nice for rocking back and forth on. But while high carbon is really good at maintaining its edge and staying sharp without much maintenance, it does rust very easily. So if you get one of these, make sure that you're drying them off as soon as they touch the water after you clean them, because if you don't, they will rust. And I also love my mini rubber spatula. It's by Tavolo and I just love the curves on all of their silicone spatulas. It's really nifty for getting into corners, scraping along jars, getting every last bit of every last drop of everything. I also really love these tongs. They fit in my hand just right. They take just the right amount of force to control. They don't hurt your hand like you're getting an arm workout or anything. It's just, and they're a musical instrument. Fantastic. And these aren't so much tools as they are just a part of my very kitchen existence. I love utensils. I like to collect them from thrift stores. I like to steal them from airlines. I like to just have them. 
I want to own all of the cool spoons. And if you watch Budget Eats, you know that this one is my favorite. Aaron gave me this one for my birthday one year, and it is honestly probably the best gift I've ever received because it's beautiful, it's simple, it's functional, it's practical, and I use it every day. It's a gift that is a part of my very existence. Thanks, Aaron. I could do this all day, but I'll just show you my new favorite fork. It is, I guess, a serving fork, but I like to just use it to eat my food with. And I believe it is a silver plated number. I thrifted this in a thrift store in Astoria in Queens, and it just delights me to my very core. I'm a simple girl. This guy is a very meaningful and sentimentally important number for me. This is a timer that I've had since maybe like 2014 in my second kitchen ever in New York City. This guy has survived being next to the fire for three months, uh, getting lost underneath all of the low boys and getting flooded every night for about 10 days when we were cleaning the floors and me not knowing where I was. And then finally one day we flushed it out and I was like, oh my God, my dearly beloved timer. And three days later, it came back to life. Doesn't have a backing, but it still works. And it's adorable and I love it so much. Thank you for coming to my kitchen once again. I hope you enjoyed this tour and let me know any more questions you may have for me and I'll just address them in the next Budget Eats. And uh, I'll see you next time, whenever that is. June, I didn't want to finish this without offering you some. Yes, give it to me. <laughs>